Okay, we're using Hydrofusion 10s. There's various sizes. I really like the 10s. You're going to get 10 inches of throw. They mechanically capture while we stroke them out. Whatever lifting element you're using in here, uh, whether it's an add-on jack, whether it's bottle jacks, whatever your applications are, uh, if you've got to do build-up with cribbing, make sure that your footprint is large enough to accommodate that. If we were going airbags right here, you don't want to think about this angle. Make sure that your box crib is going to give you either a wedge pack set, an articulating box crib, or maybe the possibility of something's going to prevent kickouts. We wouldn't want those washing up this way of the vehicle. So a lot of different variables. Uh, we're going to try and just hit this one and stay with it, give you those general considerations of there are a lot of different lifting devices you could use here. We've put an extension converter on top of the Hydrofusion. We're going to put our multi-base head right on top. Because we are going to structural frame rail, we're not worried about basketing this load. We're laterally stabilizing with the gold, uh, the big 610s right there. We're going to run these Hydrofusions right in underneath. Remember, this is a little bit more vertical angle, okay? And then we're going to go ratchet strap from base plate to base plate and another load triangle going to the nose. A little redundant, uh, but, but very, very safe. And the most important piece is there is no base plate, no stabilized anchored element that is anchored to the pivot point of the vehicle. Everything is completely independent. When we get ready to lift, the last segment we're going to have to do is we're going to have to disconnect the initial X lashing that we created from the white car to the black car because it's going to the lifting point. You cannot be anchored at the lifting point and effectively lift. Okay, last pivot. We're ready to lift. Everything's rigged in and everything's very secure. This is a traveling element. We got another suspension component. We want to make sure that we have an instant reaction between what we captured down here and what we're lifting. All right. So we're going to run a ratchet strap over the deck lid and the quarter panel, just like we did here on the hood, capturing this wheel, connecting it to the other wheel, and drawing that down so that we, when we move. This moves with the car. It doesn't extend out six, seven inches before we're off of the load. So when we're ready to lift, uh, we're going to use the hydrofusion which hydraulically lifts the load. 
20,000 pound lifting column. We're way in excess of what we're lifting here. Let's say theoretically this is a 2,500, 3,000 pound car. We're only lifting a portion of it, which is the lighter portion. So when you think about pivot point and lifting point, you can always use a half coefficient. At a maximum, we're lifting about 1,500 pounds. So we're well engineered. Our ratchet straps, all 3,300 pound ratchet straps or greater, all meet the requirements of even a 1.5 times coefficient. So we're engineered very well. We got good load triangles. We're ready to rock. On this hydrofusion, uh, it's basically like an old Ford of Power with advanced technology. So we got a two-stage pump. I'm going to pump this up. This is going to send the hydraulic piston through the hydrofusion, which is going to lift. As it lifts, the gold locking nut is going to travel on a threaded piston. I'm going to spin that gold locking nut down and capture the progress of the lift. That's why we don't have mountains of cribbing out here. So using good strut theory and good resources eliminates a ton of the material that we would have traditionally used on a lift like this. Back here on the gold strut, Scott's going to chase the load. Because we've rigged with chains, you don't want to just mechanically extend that or, or manually by hand. You want to use the shoring hammer in that locking nut to make sure you're spinning that around and keeping that chain taut. You don't want a lot of slack building up in it. Also understand that if you don't have an infinitely traveling strut, something that you can completely finitely control, the only way to chase the load is by pulling in a ratchet strap, okay? Or you're going to have to use cribbing. So if you've got a pinning strut, anything that you pull a pin out, extend it, and put a new pin in, this is not an application you're going to be able to use. You're going to have to have cribbing for the in-between times when your strut isn't lined up and pinned. With the Paratex, we can travel that locking nut the whole time, stay right on the threads, and infinitely capture our lift. Okay? So here we go. We're going to start pumping. This has to be very coordinated. Uh, you'd have a team leader in front. He's going to be dictating pump, pump. And on both sides, we're duplicating the exact same speed, the exact same movement, and the exact same captures. You ready? Pump. Pump. You all right? Pump. You got a lot of slack in your chain, brother. Good. Okay. Pump. Pump. I'll wait for you to catch up. Go ahead and get this and I'll talk about it. And make sure you show that change. Alright, so while we're pumping and we're working this, um, as this guy down here, I'm evaluating the tension of our chain as much as I'm evaluating the stabilizing strut. So I want to make sure that we don't have slack and gap in there. If we do, then our stabilizers aren't really catching up with the load. So you got to make sure you're coordinated. And every time we pump, when we pump, we're going to watch that gap pump. Pump. When we see that gap, we're going to make sure we slow down until the chain catches up. Once the tension catches up, then we can keep lifting. Good. Move it. Pump. 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 Stop. So you can see right there, with basically five pumps, by capture every, capturing everything, we immediately gained basically exactly what we needed. The load is completely off of the white vehicle. So we suspended everything, everything's up, we're ready to work at this point. We're completely secured away from the white vehicle, so the white vehicle could be plucked, or we could go right to work doing an extrication. The only other application in this scenario that would require more lift is if we couldn't displace the white car and we had to do a dash lift. If we had to do a dash lift on the white minivan, we might need more gap to be able to get that to play out without hitting the black Volvo. So tools through toolbox. Uh, car on car, 
just as a wrap up, remember the sequence, okay? Always try and have the end goal in mind. What am I extricating? How am I extricating? And then start with simple interventions and build up from there. We always start with the vehicle to ground if possible. Stabilize that package. Four points of contact, primary stabilization, draw it down. Once you create a secure foundation or hub, you can squeeze, compress, and draw other uh, loads to it. So that's what we started with. Secured the white car, X bracing or X lashing with our ratchet straps to the independent load, threw it into the white car, made sure we got primary stabilization on the pivot point. Light is secured now, now we move to struts. Remember your stabilizing struts, uh, try and get them high, try and get them to carry the load so that they're going to assume, uh, and make sure that your angles are close to 45 degrees on your stabilizers, on your lifters, much more vertical, 55 degrees, 60 degrees, somewhere in that range. Make sure that you're using load triangles to capture the pivot point, prevent it from shifting. Do your load calculations if necessary, especially on heavier loads or if you have uh, less uh, heavily engineered struts. If you're using smaller thinner gauge struts with less load capacity, make sure you're taking the time to ensure that you're rigging safely and using appropriate design loads. Work together as a team, make sure your angles marry up so you don't shift left or right, be nice and progressive and systematic, and remember you only need to lift what you need to lift to perform your objective. You don't have to jack these things up two feet in the air. Get what you need, secure it, and then go to work. Hope this gave you some good, uh, good applications, good resources for doing car-on-car -car stabilization. See you next time.